Life becomes more complicated with time. New parents always think that raising babies and toddlers is a tedious task. The constant cycle of changing, feeding, playtime and putting the kid to sleep can be utterly exhausting. But as babies grow into children, tweens and then teens, parents often wish for the days when parenting was physically laborious instead of mentally challenging and emotionally draining. For as children grow and develop into young adults, their needs change and grow along with them. Farooq Ghani's wealth had grown with time, as have his children. But all the money that he has cannot help him to save his children from their own fears or protect them from the challenges that life throws at them. Wealth and children are a trial by means of which Allah tests his slaves to know who will give thanks for them and who will be distracted from Allah by them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, And know that your possessions and your children are but a trial and that surely what Allah is a mighty reward. Surah Al-Anfal, verse 28. Another cold front has come through. And as the fire burns in the grate in the evening, with the wind howling outside, Ali Baba continues with the story of Fitas and the Ghani brothers. Nana, is the story of the Ghani brothers over? Far from it, my boy. There's still much that happened in the lives of the Ghani brothers, especially Farooq. Tell me about it, Nana. Yeah, yeah. Did I mention that Farooq was something of a playboy? You did, but I thought that was only when he was in Cape Town. It was worse then, but when he came back to Joburg, he was still a somewhat restless spirit. You see, Farooq was always searching for something and he thought he could find it with the many women he got involved with. Oh no! Didn't that cause trouble with his wife? Not really. Salma didn't know what was going on with him. I think maybe she always suspected, but she turned a blind eye. It would have been difficult for her to confront a man like Farooq. Salma's family were all in Cape Town, so she had no support structure here. If he kicked her out, she could never have gone back to her family in Cape Town. They were very poor and a rough lot. Shame, Nana. So she just stuck it out? <sighs> yes. But she also had the benefit of the money, and I sort of think that's why she acted like she didn't know what Farooq was up to. But then, something changed. About 15 years ago, once again, there was political changes taking place in the country. Farooq had taken up some of the political work of his late father, Ashraf Ghani, and he had ties with the government. But there were some underhanded dealings going on and Farooq's import-export business was linked to allegations of fraud. Before he was charged, his lawyer somehow managed to avoid a court case. She kept Farooq out of jail and managed to save his business. Ooh, Nana, did they have to bribe the judge? I don't know, my boy. But from that time on, Farooq changed some of his ways. He used to spend a lot of time here getting advice from his brother, Molana Hassan. Olana told him to stop the sin of womanizing that he was involved in, and Farooq actually took heed and listened. So, he wasn't really a bad person, right Nana? I mean, he actually gave up a major sin. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes, men get caught up in sin, but that doesn't make them bad. We have been taught to hate the sin and not the sinner. Allah is always willing to forgive a man, as long as he makes sincere toba. Farooq didn't try to mend his ways and make things right. Shortly after that incident, Farooq brought the lawyer who had been handling his case to his brother's home and made nikah with her. <gasps> really? Yo! Did his wife know about it? No, in fact to this day, I think Selma doesn't know that Farooq is married to Farhana and even has a son with her. After what seems like hours, but is actually only minutes since the imposter entered his room, Zaydan is still reeling from the shock of the attack. He sits on the edge of his bed, shaking in fright. He 
He tries to make sense of what just happened, but his mind is in disarray. Taking a few deep breaths to calm himself, Zaydan hears his cell phone ping with a message. He picks it up and sees a voice note from his uncle. Zaydan, I know it's late, but I just wanted to remind you, my door is always open. Whatever you're going through, please call me at any time. Zaydan listens to the voice note in surprise. It's as if his uncle sensed that something was wrong. Immediately, he dials Mulan Hassan's number and is relieved when he picks up on the first ring. Hassan Papa, am I disturbing you? Zaydan, uh, no, of course not. I, I was hoping that uh, you'd actually open my voice message. Hassan Papa, you were right. Uh, uh, about that friend of yours, that Sheldon? Yes. Uh, do you want to talk about it, say? I do, but... Uh, uh, did, did he make any advance towards you? Y- yes, he, he came into my room just just now. And, and he t- tried to... Did did he hurt you? No, he. I managed to pull. I managed to push him away in in time. Alhamdulillah for that. Um, so, so so he was just taking his chances with you, say. Eh? Huh? How did you know? I've I've been dealing with a few cases of this nature. When you know when you told me about him earlier, uh, I was expecting something like this to happen. Uh, so so are you safe? I'm safe. He, he didn't do anything to me. He. He tried to choke me, but I managed to fight back. So where is Sheldon now? He, he, I don't know. He left the room when I turned on the light. Did you lock your door, Zaydan? Uh, or maybe you want to go and speak to the teacher, you know, who's uh, on night duty? No, I locked my door. I, I don't think he'll come back again. I can't get the teachers involved. I'm not a snitch. Zay. This isn't about you being a telltale. Your your izzet could have been destroyed. Uh, you remember the story of the people of uh, Nabi Lut, alayhi salam? Kind of. So Allah speaks of it in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِنْ دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بل أنتم قوم مصرفون وما كان جواب قومه إلا أن قالوا أخرجوهم من قريتكم إنهم أناس يتطهرون فأنجيناه وأهله إلا امرأته كانت من الغابرين وأمطرنا عليهم مطرا فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ So the gist of the ayat that I recited, Nabi Lut a.s. was a cousin of Nabi Ibrahim a.s. and he settled on the eastern side of Jordan where the people were involved in many great sins. Now amongst the evils that they practiced was the sin of homosexuality. So Nabi Lut a.s. he tried to preach them to, you know, to mend their ways, but they just refused to listen. And then one day, there were some handsome men that appeared in the city. And Nabi Lut, salam, he feared that the people would, you know, they would go and, and, and they would take advantage of these men. But the men were actually angels who, who came to destroy these people and because of the evil evil habits and the evil actions. Now, the angels advised uh, Lut, salam, that, uh, you know, leave the town except for his wife as uh, she, she was also involved in, in helping these people in their wrong actions. And then as soon as they left, an earthquake struck the town and it lifted the entire city and flung the city back down. And all the people of the town, even including Lut Salam's wife, were destroyed, except for, you know, Nabi Lut Salam and his family. So what should I do, Asin Papa? My child, look, it is it's very difficult, you know, to, to change the actions of others. But you can protect yourself from, you know, getting involved in, in their wrongs. And the only way to do it is to remove yourself from that type of an environment. So they, I think that, you know, it's, it's probably best if you, if you just leave the school and you come back home. <laughs> Jareer goes into Nazia's room one morning later that week while she's in the shower. He sees her diary lying open on her bed and unable to resist, he picks it up and finds himself reading his sister's latest entry. (laughs) 
Dear Diary, today was the hardest day of my life. I know I start most of my MJs off like that, but this time it really is too. Everyone seems so happy and settled here in our new home in the Mahalis Mountains, but I think they're all just acting. I sense an undercurrent between mom and dad. Since they told mom that dad might have a secret family. I don't know if mom asked him about it, and that's why they acting strange. Or maybe it's because of this whole saga with the threatening calls dad's getting. I wonder if it's really true. I mean, who could be after daddy? Sure, he has loads of money, but he's such a janky man. Anyway, it all seems so, so pointless. I want me to go back to campus, but I'll never be free now that this goon double will be following me around. No, the only place I can be free is inside my own head. And that's why, dear diary, I have decided to withdraw myself into myself. But they still on my case to get up. Get to face a lot. Eat. Yada, yada, yada. I must say, I don't really have anyone to confide in anymore. Sometimes I just wish I hadn't been born at all. Maybe it will be easier if I just disappear. <sighs> Maybe if I wasn't here anymore, life would be better for all of them. So long, dear diary. This might be my final entry forever. Shocked at what he has just read, Jareed drops Nazia's diary and it clatters to the floor, just as he hears her turning off the shower. As embarrassed as he is at having read his sister's private thoughts, he is even more concerned about what she has written. He places the diary back onto her bed in the same position as it was and silently exits the room before Nazia gets out of the shower. Jareed goes in search of Pilar, who he finds outside in the huge garden. Bilal, I've been looking for you all over. Where were you? I just came outside to collect some worms. Thought since we are here and it's the weekend, we might as well go fishing in the stream later. Forget that fishing man. Listen, I think something's going on with Nazia. Something's always going on with Nazia. She's such a drama queen. No, Bilal, I think it's serious. You know, I just went into her room just now to get help with my maths and then I like, I don't know, my eyes just fell on the diary on the bed. <gasps> Don't tell me you read it. Uh, you know, like I wouldn't have read it, you know, but um, it was like open and the words just kind of like just popped out at me. It, it was like just like staring at me. Lol, don't be so defensive, Ja. We all have our sneaky moments. Uh, whatever. But listen here. Listen here, bro. Nasia wrote that she's depressed and like uh, kind of a sad story. Duh. That's not news. Remember the day a couple of weeks ago when we couldn't even get her up from her sleep? I know, I know. But bro, like, uh, now I think she's contemplating suicide. And it's getting real serious. Oh my god, this is serious. Are you sure that's what you read? Did she, like, say directly that she's actually thinking of killing herself? Oh, uh, well, no. Like, not directly, bro. But, like, she, she had it written, you know? It was like... That it would be better for all of us if she wasn't, like, with us anymore. It would be better for all of us as a family. Scary, hey? So what should we do? Uh, you know what? I don't know what to do, bro. But, I don't know. I thought maybe you would have had an idea. Maybe should we tell our Topi and Danny? What? No, they'll go ballistic. Dad is so caught up with this whole threat thing. And you know how narcissistic he is. I mean, we just found out that he has another wife and a son. And we dare not even approach him on it. And the Tani will just go and confront Nez in her usual blunt fashion. And then the whole thing will blow up. But we have to get her help, Bilal. Obvious. But who can we go to? Say can usually get through to her, but he's not here. What about... Um, Hassan Papa. Hassan Papa? But we haven't even spoken to him in years, bro. Hmm, we haven't. But remember after school yesterday? We went to the Houghton Masjid for Juma before we came here. I heard the Owen saying that Morana Hassan Ghani is going to be the new Imam there. I think he's moving out of Fitas. He's leaving Fitas? Ooh, that's weird. I thought he's gonna live there forever. You know that mentality of staying there forever. Hmm, me too. Actually, he might be the best person to talk to. I heard he's really clued up on social issues related to the youth. Yeah, brilliant, bro. But, uh, I don't know, how are we gonna get in touch with him? You know, our, your mom is gonna go nuts if she finds out that we're contacting him and we didn't get through her. Especially after the fallout they had all those years ago. I don't know, should we take that route? Duh, ja. You don't have to tell the Tani everything, you know.
A man is leaving the school gates on Monday afternoon when his cell phone rings. He takes it out of his blazer pocket and sees that it is his mother trying to get hold of him. Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Salam Zumi. I saw your must call. I was in class earlier so I couldn't answer. <coughs> I thought you would be, but the network is so bad with the low chatting and my messages weren't going through. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to the doctor, so I won't be home when you get back from Madrasa. I left the key next door so you can get in. Okay, I'll sort myself out. But Umi, why are you going to the doctor? Are you sick? No, no. Papa's been telling me to get this cough checked up. So I finally called and got an appointment for this afternoon. Okay, Umi. I'll go straight to Madrasa then. A man? <coughs> I know Papa hates you to walk, but it's only a few streets away. Will you be okay? Chill, Umi. Don't stress. Lots of kids walk. I'll just train one of them. Okay, my child. See you later. A man walks to the end of the street and is about to cross over when a car stops alongside him. The driver winds down his window and calls out to him. Hey, small boss. Can you help me? I want to know how to get to the nearest uh, garage. Sure. You see the next stop street? Just turn left and drive about three blocks down. You will see a Caltex on your... A man is so caught up in the process of giving the stranger directions that he does not notice another man approaching him on foot until he feels his hand being grabbed. Suddenly, his body is yanked towards the back door of the very same car that he's standing alongside of. He tries to scream, but before he can even open his mouth, a gigantic hand is clamped over his mouth while a black mask is pulled down over his face. A man gags on a strange smell and before he passes out, he feels himself being shoved into the car. We are excited to announce that the Radio Islam app is available on Android as well as the iOS platform. Download it today, access seamless streaming, salah times, recipes and all other features available for free from Radio Islam International.